So I made um, a list of five areas of baby things for your first year of baby abroad. So you're in a different country. What are the things that you need and what are the things that are like, no, that's just American consumerism. Um, so in five different areas, um, we have eat, sleep, and poop, because that's basically all that happens the first while. And travel and clean or cleanliness, make you really happy, mommy and baby. And then on the side, I have a couple more things for mom. Nursing bras. Um, I didn't use my nursing bra for very long because it wasn't very comfortable. I didn't, I didn't feel like it supported me very well. The second thing I put down was boob pads. You know, the things that like, it's like a big cloth thing for your boob when all the milk comes out because your boobs aren't used to giving milk. And then um, my third thing was having layers of clothes. So this is something that my friend suggested to me for breastfeeding fashion. So if you have um, different layers, then you can just pull one layer up and pull one layer down and be completely covered and breastfeed and it's really not a big deal. But in being abroad, you'll find your post culture, your new culture, might be completely fine with your boobs being out. Um, Brazil's like, why do you need a blanket? Of course you're feeding your baby. But I know other places in the US and Europe, not so okay with that. Yeah, she's like, I see it, I'm ready to eat, please. Yeah, so um, this is probably my favorite thing. Obviously the first six months or whatever, um, she's just drinking milk. We breastfed and that was much cheaper and much easier, but that's not for everyone and totally understandable. So this is six months. Is that your favorite? So yeah, no spill cup. Awesome. Um, teether. Something, some kind of teether to go in the freezer. Did you want that too? There you go. Um, as soon as she was four months old. No spill. No spill. So this is awesome. As soon as she was four months old, I started giving her fruit. You just stick some fruit in here. We have awesome fruit in Brazil. When you're abroad, take advantage of those food items you have. Um, so you would put the fruit in here and she could suck it out at four months until she was ready for our solid food, closer to six months. And then this is what we use all the time now. So it suctions onto the thing. It doesn't do it strong enough for her not to get it out. But it works very well. It has a little lid for her to travel. It has a spoon then right there. And um, it works really well. She just works on feeding herself. I actually didn't do any baby food um, because she just, at six months, we started giving her little pieces of things and she started feeding herself. She actually didn't use the spoon and stuff to closer to 10 or 11 months. So it's important for in the eating area that you have some kind of food seat. So I'm not saying you have to have a high chair, we just have a little plastic seat, it folds up, it fit in our suitcase, we brought it here, um, cause it didn't sell that in our host uh, country. And so we have that just connected to a chair and that's her food seat somewhere where she can eat. Uh, lastly, we also did have a breast pump um, so when we needed it and it came with a couple of bottles and those were really all the bottles that we used. So in your host country, you might have, they might have large living spaces, they might have smaller living spaces than you're used to. Um, this is our daughter's room. So we just bought a simple pack and play, and we got this at um, Once Upon a Child a consignment store um, for about $35. But she actually slept with us because I was scared that she would stop breathing and all that kind of stuff. And we just had this little thing. It had two little pillows on the outside, and then it was like a little place for her to lay so that we wouldn't squish her and she wouldn't roll. Well, she wasn't rolling, she didn't do anything. Um, but it was a handy dandy little thing I got for 10 guys here in Brazil. It was like $3 and um, we really used that. Then this had a bassinet thing, so we used that for the next couple months and um, that worked really well. This actually has an awesome thing that we use as a changing table too. Love it, love it, love it. And then she uses this. We bought a different insert to make it a little more comfy because we use this pack and play as her bed as well. On top of it, I put just something waterproof. I just bought a tablecloth and put it in there and put her sheets on top of that because otherwise your cushions will often get some leaks through. So you need to have sheets, 
a crib, something waterproof so that you are protecting your mattress. All right, so for your sleeping needs, you not only need a place for the baby to sleep, but a big thing to help her to be able to go to sleep is to have a system, so like a nighttime routine. Um, so we always have some books. Um, where we live abroad, it's hard to get children's hardback books, so that was another thing that we bought as well. A nightlight really helps areas, because especially if you travel a lot, you're not sure what's going to be happening at the place where you travel. So she has a nightlight. Also have a sound machine that we found we needed after we travel quite a lot. Um, so it's just something small and you push different sounds and that goes on to help her be able to relax wherever she is at. We also made sure to have a comfortable chair. I just bought a simple plastic chair and put a blanket over it and that's where I breastfeed her at night. That's where we read a book at night. Just someplace comfortable to be together so we can have our nighttime routine. Those are things you need for baby sleep. Babies poo! It is part of life. So we have a changing station here. Um, you can really do whatever you want. I have a lot of friends, they just have a plastic mat that they put on the floor. You don't need a whole piece of furniture just for a changing oh, station. We have a system where we do disposable diapers that we have, as well as cloth diapers. So a baby uses between eight to 10 diapers a day. How many diapers do you need? So diapering is definitely a big deal for the first month of her life. Um, she has sort of weird poops or I'm getting used to stuff, so we just did disposable diapers. Um, for wipes, we actually just had a pump with water and used cotton swabs because it's even softer for the baby, the poor baby's skin, than um, actual wet wipes. So after the first month, we figured out a system where we use disposable diapers at night and when we're going out and um, cloth diapers when we're at home. So basically, uh, I have about 15 of these that I just make sure to wash regularly and use. And they're so much easier than they used to be in the past. But I brought these because they do not have cloth diapers in the country that we are at. But that's what works for us. Um, we uh, do not use disposable wipes um, just because I couldn't find the right material and sewing and all kinds of craziness. So yeah, we just use the regular wipes that they have in the country that we have. Diapers are also different maybe in the country when you're abroad. Um, you might find that all diapers are not equal. There's definitely cheap ones that don't work. Um, so figure out what kind of diapers you like. And a lot of that's just trial and error. Um, I know a good suggestion was don't buy a ton of one kind of diaper in case you find that the baby doesn't like it or you don't like it. So bath time abroad might look a little different. We don't have a bathtub. Towels and burp racks, having all that stuff to be able to clean up because especially the first while while you're figuring stuff out, you need it. Keep clean um, from medicine stuff. We basically the only things that we really used a lot because our daughter was very healthy and being abroad this can be a huge concern about how healthy your daughter was and finding a good pediatrician. Um, so we had friends who were here, they helped us connect us with a good pediatrician and she has been very helpful. We, she did get a cold and we needed to use the nose sucker thing, but there was just a simple thing where you squeeze and pull it in. I don't know, there's lots of different kinds. Something that I loved because it helps me feel safe was the touch thermometer. So you just touch it on her side of her forehead and it lets you do that. So that was something we got from the US um, at, at my baby shower and I love it. Clothes and shoes. So we just have some of her clothes over here. Um, it was not a big deal. Um, a very good suggestion is don't buy any clothes until after the baby shower because people like to give clothes and that's a fun thing to give. And uh, it's very easy to find clothes, especially if you need some at the consignment shops. Um, clothing shopping might be different abroad. So make sure you know like if you have enough clothes. Um, something that I make sure to do is shoes are pretty expensive in Brazil. So I make sure I have some of every size when we come back to the US. Make sure you have a pacifier, a pacifier holder, and a pacifier clip. So the pacifier holder that keeps it clean in your bag. And the pacifier clip keeps it not lost, so it keeps it on your child. I think all those things go together for sure. Um, and then different lotion and some products and different stuff. Um, when honestly Sophie was born, somebody actually, actually suggested to us that we use extra virgin olive oil. Um, and I like it so much better than baby oil. So I just 
put her in this after we would shower her, put this on her hair actually for the first while too, um, and it worked great as for lotion, but you can find whatever works there. You can basically get extra virgin olive oil or coconut oil, I've heard is very good too, um, in most countries, so that solved those problems. Figuring out her hair, um, so I've had help from her family members giving me different hair products. Find what works for you, and we get those from the U.S. too. And I'm sure they have good hair products here in Brazil as well. I just don't know where to find them. Child proofing. So child proofing stuff. Um, the major thing that we did was um, outlet covers, and the outlets are different in our country than in the U.S. So we had to buy those here, but they were not difficult to find. Um, so you can't always be prepared bringing everything from the U.S. Some things you'll just have to be flexible with. And um, most of the other childproofing I did ended up just being me moving where I kept things um, and training her not to open things. moving around. If you already had your baby abroad, you probably travel more than a lot of families. So having travel products and being comfortable with travel is a big deal, especially since, especially with your first child, you're just figuring out what it means to move around with a third human being. Um, so first of all, you need a car seat. So for the first year, we just are using the car seat. We didn't, we did not get a car seat that transforms, so we'll figure out car seats as we go along. Um, but we were actually given, given an awesome car seat that is a US brand uh, that was bought in Brazil. So it was more expensive, um, but it was a gift and we are so blessed to have it. So having that car seat, also when she's younger, you probably need like different cushion inserts stuff. Um, I bought those um, used for a couple dollars and I brought them and we just stuck that in the car seat until she was big enough to not look like she was getting lost in her car seat. Um, for carrying her around, we used a baby wrap. Just It's just like a one thing of material. Sling. A sling. We just use a simple sling and there are so many different kinds or whatever. They're like not in Brazil at all. We got so many looks when we used it. They're like, is there a baby in there? Like people would stop me like if she moved at all. <gasps> it's alive. Yes. Um, so we definitely brought that from our host from the U.S. Uh, and just any of them, I got mine for $7 at a consignment store. And um, then when she got bigger and could she control her neck and stuff, we just had a simple baby Bjorn and we loved it. It was awesome, you know, just a little front carrier. But any of those really work. Um, and so, and as she has grown, then we now, now we have this awesome backpack, which they also did not have in Brazil that we brought. We also just got a simple stroller. It's so something that um, I was told, especially since I did not have a mom, did not have free babysitters of family members around me, was to have a place to keep the baby while I was like doing, making dinner and doing different things, figuring out my life without having to hold the baby 24-7. So two things saved my life. So the first thing, for the first three or four months of life, um, it was just one of those bouncy chairs where it's just, you sit them there and they can sort of bounce themselves or sometimes they have a vibrator on it that bounces it for them. You know, any kind of rockabye chair. So we just had one of those and then when she was about four months, she was like, I'm wanting to be a little more mobile. We got, a friend gave us a um, bouncy chair. So it just clips on the top of the door um, and the door post and she just can bounce in it, and she that was absolutely her favorite thing until she could walk. Um, and those could not be found in our host country abroad, and so we were given one and we brought one. Um, so those were definite blessings that we received and something that you might think about someplace to have a baby that they can be sort of on their own because you need some mommy time too. So the last thing for traveling you need is a travel bag. So I just have a simple bag that I bought and then, um, Inside it, I found this, I think it's a makeup bag, but the top is waterproof, so I have this outside part where I can lay her down when I change her. And then right here, obviously, I have my wet wipes, um, I have my diapers, and I have a change of clothes because you never know what happens, and I have some bags uh, because you don't always know when you can find a trash can, especially when you're traveling in other countries. But I like putting this in another bag so that I have, I also can put, I have just her book here and whatever toys, um, but I try to keep it as simple as possible, but I can just slide it in and slide it out. And then this other bag has 
zipper bag where I can put my wallet and my keys and my phone and any of that stuff. So that is a simple to-go bag. Um, obviously at different stages of her life I have different things in here and probably when you start <laughs> when your child is just younger you'll probably have more stuff and then as they get older you realize hey I didn't need all that stuff. So um, having a to-go bag and we just hang that right on the wall so we can grab it when we leave the house.